here because this wouldn't be anything without you guys here to support us all. And this is a learning experience after all, right? So thanks for being here. <laughs> As introduced, my name is Jennifer Davis, and I am currently a graduate research assistant at Colorado State University. My concentration's in hydrogeology, which is just a fancy word for groundwater. So that's what I'm gonna talk about with you guys today. Um, also, I'm an EMU alumni. Wanna give a shout out for that. Got my bachelor's degree <laughs> in geology um, here at EMU, so great to be back, and I'm really honored to be a part of this event. So, let's get started. Again, like I said, I'm going to be talking about something that I'm very passionate about, and it's also the motivation for my research that I do for Colorado State, and that is fresh water supply. And I wanted to start out, whoops, go back there, my shaky hands. <laughs> I wanna start out first talking about the water here on Earth, because that's really the fundamental basics behind what I'm gonna be talking about throughout this whole presentation. And, um, you know, we're gonna look at how water is appropriated, where we can find it, and what water we can actually use here on Earth. And I think you guys might be surprised to learn um, some of the things we're gonna, I'm going to be showing you as far as, you know, we have a lot of water on Earth, but it might not all be what you think it is. It might not all be something that we can use very easily. So we're going to look at that, and we're going to talk about whether water is really a renewable or a non-renewable resource. And... Uh, then we're gonna do a little bit, a little talk about sustainability and how we can live a more sustainable lifestyle in terms of fresh water consumption. So let's start with the water cycle, because I think this is really where you need to start out looking at what water is here on Earth and how it works. So the water cycle is really just the circle of life for a water molecule here on Earth. And if we look at this picture here, pick a spot, let's say we start with water in the oceans, okay? So Water in the oceans evaporates, right? And then that water condenses in clouds. And then those clouds, when they get super saturated with water, they dr drop and dump all that water back down to the surface of the earth in the form of precipitation, which can either be rain or snow. And that precipitation collects on the surface of the earth, and then it can run off and it can collect back into surface water bodies, such as rivers, lakes, streams, or the ocean. Or some of that water can actually percolate down through the ground into what's called the groundwater system. And we'll take a closer look at that in a little bit, but one thing that's important to note right now when we're thinking about this is that the groundwater system is also interconnected with surface water bodies. So once those water gets back into the surface water bodies, it can drain back into the ocean, and then we start the whole process over again with evaporation. So with this slide, I really just wanted you guys to understand that water is something that renews itself. Water is something that can replenish itself through the passing of time through natural processes, okay? So next I wanna really talk about all the water on Earth, where it comes from, how we can use it. And I think it's really easy for anybody to say when they look at a globe or a map of the Earth that a lot of our planet is covered with water. We're really lucky to have a planet that has so much water on it because it's really the fundamental of life. And the problem with this is, though, is that here on Earth, 97% of all the water on Earth is ocean water. And you might think, okay, big deal, but ocean water is really salty, and the salt levels in it are too high for humans to consume. And it's also too high for us to use for agriculture, irrigation, the things that we really need water here on Earth for, right? We need to consume it, and we need it to grow our plants so that we can consume those. So it's a problem, 97%, 97% of all the water on Earth is too salty for us to do much with. So that leaves us with 3%. 3% of all the water on Earth is considered fresh water, water that we can actually consume and do something with. Now, with that 3%, about 70% of that, 70% of all the fresh water on Earth is tied up and frozen in glaciers and ice caps. So we have it, there's all that fresh water, but it's not really available to us because we can't do much with it, it's all frozen, right? So that leaves us with groundwater and surface water. So groundwater is about 29% of all the fresh water on Earth, and surface water is less than 1%. And if you were born and raised in Michigan, I can understand, because I was born and raised in Michigan. It, it, it didn't really hit me until I moved out to Colorado that when you're surrounded by all of this fresh water, these Great Lakes are wonderful. We're so lucky to live in Michigan and have those Great Lakes. I mean, it's hard to understand when we're surrounded by all that fresh water that that makes up less than 1% 
of all the fresh water on Earth. So keep that in mind as we're going through this, is that all those surface water bodies, the Great Lakes, all the surface water on Earth, less than 1% of fresh water that we can deal with. Oops. So that leaves us with our primary source of fresh water that's available to us is in the form of groundwater. So that's what I'm gonna focus on here for a little bit because that's also what I do at Colorado State. I'm a groundwater girl, so that's what I know about. We're gonna talk about that for a little bit. <laughs> so here's a basic diagram that shows a groundwater system. And this picture here is just a cross-section view. So basically they took a slice through the earth and you're getting to see what's going on down below the surface of the earth, right? So we've got our basic groundwater system here. We've got water in the form of well, they're called aquifers, basically. So when you find water in the ground, it's called an aquifer. We gotta have fancy names, scientists. We gotta make ourselves feel smart, right? So <laughs> these aquifers come in two forms. We have unconfined aquifers and confined aquifers. And as the name implies, an unconfined aquifer is a shallower source of water. It's closer to the surface of the earth and it's open to infiltration from water coming in. Um, when we looked at that diagram where the, the water cycle, the precipitation comes down, it can infiltrate down into the ground. Usually those go into unconfined aquifers. And unconfined aquifers are also well connected with surface water bodies, lakes, rivers, streams. So again, um, those things can interact with each other. Water from the unconfined aquifers can get into surface waters, go through the water cycle, et cetera, et cetera. But the problem is, is that a lot of our groundwater is in the form of these confined aquifers. And again, as the name implies, these confined aquifers are not well connected with other water sources around them. They don't interact with surface water bodies. They don't interact with other aquifer systems like the unconfined aquifers most of the time. And the thing is, is that the water in these confined aquifers it's been there for a while. It got in there before humans were around to suck it out. And it's been sitting down there. And the water coming back into those confined aquifers is very little. So we've got this water sitting down there, but we're not getting water that keeps coming into it. And so that's something I want you to think about um, as we go through uh, the next few slides here. So renewable or non-renewable, -re right? It's a big question. When we think about the water cycle, I showed you the circle of life, water replenishes itself naturally over time. Great, wonderful, renewable resource, right? Easy to say. But as I just showed you with the groundwater, which is, again, remember, our number one source for fresh water supply that's available to us, that does not replenish itself. The rates that that water is, the little bit of water that's coming back into those confined aquifer and the rates that they're coming in are so slow that the water in those confined aquifers are considered non-renewable. So that's a problem because those confined aquifers are our biggest source for available fresh water, right? And it's a non-renewable resource. And I think a lot of people don't understand that and we don't realize that the rates that we're consuming water at um, are too high for something that's a non-renewable resource. So that's a big, big issue today. Um, Next, I want to talk a little bit about desalination, because you're probably thinking, okay, well, 97% of all the water on Earth is ocean water, so why don't we just do something with that, right? And it's a good idea. We have, actually. They've developed this process called desalination, and it's capable of removing salts and other minimal minerals from saline water. So we can make salty ocean water drinkable, potable, fresh water. Great, yay, we can do something with all that water on Earth. But the thing is, is that the infrastructure for this process is really expensive and it's highly energy consumptive. So it's great for areas that don't have a lot of fresh water available in the forms of groundwater or surface water. But here in the United States, we have a decent amount of fresh water. So this desalination process isn't really economically feasible for us here. Um, but it is being done, so it's an option. But it's just not really something that we do here because we have enough fresh water. But that's the thing that I want you guys to think about, is that we have all this fresh water here. Again, being from Michigan, we have these great lakes. We're surrounded by all this fresh water. It's hard to really understand when we see all of this water everywhere that's fresh, that most of it that we have is, is really a non-renewable resource. And we have to really be careful about how our lifestyles are in, in the sense of consuming fresh water and being aware of the fact that it's a non-renewable resource and um, it's just not something that we're ever going to get back if we use it all. 
So that brings me to my next point, sustainability. And I know sustainability is kind of one of those hot buzzwords right now. Everybody's like, oh, I'm sustainable. Oh, this is sustainable. And, you know, they just kind of throw it around willy-nilly. And I think a lot of people are losing sight of that sustainability is a real thing. It has a definition. And it means that something has the capacity to endure, right? So in terms of fresh water, sustainable fresh water resources are fresh water resources that have the capacity to endure throughout time, um, even with human consumption. So um, really, are we living a sustainable lifestyle if the supplies of those fresh water resources that we have are non-renewable and the rates at which we are demanding those supplies are greater than the rates at which those supplies can replenish themselves. And therefore, that is a non-sustainable living. We are not living sustainably and consuming fresh water resources in a sustainable fashion in this day and age. So what can we do? Um, the main thing we can do is really just make informed decisions. Um, I know a lot of people, you know, you hear a biased opinion about a topic and you, th you hear it and you say, oh yeah, that sounds great, they had a really good point, you know, but you're just hearing one person's opinion. And I mean, that goes, I'm sad to say, it goes even for me right now up here talking to you guys. I mean, I'm passionate about this, this is my thing, but you know, don't trust just what I say. I really urge you to go out and do some research, look into it on your own and find out more about the topic that's not just one person's opinion. And once you really start to learn more about something, you can make an informed decision about your lifestyle or something that small changes that you can make. One thing that I started to do, I'll admit it, I really like to take long, hot showers, right? But one thing I started to do that I never realized I was doing before was that when I brush my teeth, I, leave, I used to leave the water on, right? That's so simple, that's something that all of us could do. You could just turn off the water while you're brushing your teeth, right? I don't know if you guys do that, but I used to. And I mean, there's just little things like that, that if you take a closer look at your life, once these things, you start to realize this is really something important, how can I make changes in my life? And you know, once you make informed decisions, that's really the basis of having a sustainable lifestyle. Um, also, again, like I said, Explore, investigate, research. If you come across a topic that is really important to you, and again, you only heard one person's opinion, go out there and investigate, research, find out more about it. You might find out something, find an organization that's local that you could get involved with and help out with um, just spreading the word about how important this topic is. And I know that there are a lot of organizations out there that do things where they have bicycles that they send to countries that don't have surface water available, and they have groundwater, but they don't have the money to implement wells to get that groundwater out. And so there is an organization that has bicycles where you can pedal the bicycle and that acts as a pump, and it pulls the groundwater out. So just little things like that. Once you do some investigation and some research, you can find things like that that fit into your lifestyle and things that you can do um, to help with this kind of thing. And, you know, the number one thing that I really want to uh, impress on you today is to increase awareness. I mean, you might think that's so little and so small, but just telling a friend or a family member, hey, I went to this TEDx conference today, and this girl was talking about fresh water, and it was really interesting, and she had some cool things to say about, you know, our fresh water is really a non-renewable resource. Maybe I should think about how much water I use when I take a shower or brush my teeth. You know, spread the word, tell somebody else. That little thing really means a lot. And for me, um, spreading awareness is probably the number one thing to do and also the easiest thing to do. And I hope that I was successful in doing that here today with all of you. So thank you for listening. <laughs>